there we go so if somebody comes in here let me know how it sounds here real quick and then uh hopefully this look works right this time hopefully this works right so if anybody's popping in just let me know if you can hear me loud and clear i do appreciate it. i had to go through a bunch of uh craziness last night after the breaks for nice thank you thank you guys Believe it or not, I was up for two hours after I got off just trying to fix it all. It was horrible. I had to reinstall drives and cameras, and then, of course, this computer wouldn't uh, kick over to a live stream for me to view. And for some reason, it was I have like a little flash drive onto it that does the internet to make it faster. Well, I guess it kicked it offline, so I don't know. It was just crazy. But got some cool mail day, and this was in yesterday. I'll open a box here in a second. This is Kyler Murray, unparalleled rookie from 19. I'm trying to get everything back into focus and stuff, so bear with me on stuff. Pretty nice little piece. TJ Washington Select. This is the court side, which I don't know why it doesn't say it on it, but you have to go in the back. Court side. They should have put courtside on us. I don't know why they didn't. And then my Mac Daddy. This is uh, from Origins. Uh, dual patch uh, auto. Kyler Murray, Isabella. Rookie stars. Dual patch. Out of 25. Yeah, I got in case, but I am not opening it. I'm selling it. I, I just don't feel lucky. Um, this is contenders. You had six autos in here, and basically you're looking for, uh, let me think here, LaMelo, uh, Edwards, Wiseman, there's another guy who's a D. Slight pause, I don't know. It might be a delay it's on here. I can't figure it out. I've been playing with this thing for since last night. And I'm not paying stream yards $30 a month when I paid $90 lifetime for a program. I just keep on playing with the recordings. Yeah, it's lucky if you get that many. Oh, you know what? There's an auto for packing this stuff. It could be the mic, too, taking a second to kick in. I have no idea. I can't tell you how many test videos I ran last night. I think it was something on a neighborhood of 113, 114 that I had to delete while I was uh, on support. And their support chat all does it by uh, Facebook Messenger. So, exciting. Wow, man, these are pretty cool looking, though. First auto. Oh, one good buck. Yeah, that's about right. Lamar Stevens. Encased is a very hard product. Uh, it's it's harder than National Treasures and stuff. I I've never ever done well out of it. The one year was Malik Monk. I can't remember who I got last year. It was weird in these here. Yeah, I really pay attention to a lot of these. Ob Toppin, that's one of the ones that's uh, actually decent in the draft. I knew there was another name. No, actually, it wasn't. I was picking up soccer anyhow. I'm just trying to open up different stuff on the channel. Um, I, I don't want to sit there and like be the guy that opens up a blaster box or hanger box every time and try to rotate it around a little. Plus, I got to get my soccer allocation up, and there's only one way to do it. Number? Oh, a shiner and the rest. Oh, wait a second. 
Yeah, that, that's Sean here. Darren Jackson's gonna. Oh, it's huge. Yeah, it's, if I want to get my Topps Chrome the B word, yeah. That's pretty cool there for John Hunt Wall. Oh, that's actually there. It is numbered out of 75. Now, I've heard of this guy. And the only reason why this is Culver's uh, little brother that scores some ridiculous amount in a high school game, I think it was, maybe college game. I don't know how well he'll do. But uh, from that video, he's definitely the better Culver. Oh, yeah, yeah. I got a couple in a PSA right now. Soccer's hard. No, no Anthony Edwards. I just start. If I pulled Anthony Edwards' auto, I'd probably holler. Honestly, that Culver would probably give me the best one. It's hard to read some of these names. Oh, here we go. That's why I don't like contenders draft. They go over here which way. And the bases are just ridiculous. Soccer's a fun rip. I don't I know most of the names, but sometimes I get messed up in them. See how well he does in the NBA. You know how many years people come out and they're horrible. Those are two more. Like I guess these are the premiums. They just don't say nothing on it. Hmm. Yeah, I, I've seen the guys falter to top way too much. I don't ever bank on anybody. I just take all the rookies and roll with them. Woodard a second. Magic. <laughs> There's a Rui. There's a Zion. Man, imagine those last year. Those things were all hot in this. We haven't had a numbered card yet for uh, autos. Yeah, Contenders Draft's hard. They just throw everybody in it, and it's like a straight up shoot fest. Lonzo. Lori Marquet, and I haven't seen anything of that dude anymore. Oh, lovely guy there. Loving Anthony, I guess, are premiums. I'm just sleeving those up for the time being. I doubt those sell for much. Might throw them in a grab bag later. Well, we got a cracked ice if this dude ever comes good. Xavier Sneed. Uh, 23. K-State. I'm taking it's no relation to you. This guy here is like supposed to be a top draft pick. I can't even say his name. He's just going to be double O this year for me. That's how I'm going to call his name. Double O. There's double O again. Two left, but we got Xavier Sneed. I'll have to look him up. If he's a first round pick, he might actually get some money for it. So 
So Durant and Lillard. Uh, I don't know that name either. I don't really watch college basketball, so. I just know some of the bigger names. That's about it. Omer Yurt7. I don't think I ever pulled anything good out of college draft now that I think about it for basketball. But they only give me one box every year of this stuff. Oh, the Snee guy, 14 points? Yeah, that's not bad, not good, same time frame. Ben Simmons, LSU. This time we go like this, so I don't have to really look at them all. Bill, I guess these are called premiums. I'm not sure. Oh, I don't know if that's the good guy there or not. See, I, I, I'm not good with these names. Man, let this be numbered at least. Nope. Oh, it is. It's a finals ticket out of 10. Udoko Azuboiki. That's the best I'm going to do. Do not pick up on my names. Udoka Azuboiki. It's a finals ticket out of 10. I I think that's one of the good ones too. Man, where did I put that box at? He might I think he was on the cover of the box. You know if they're on the cover of the box, they gotta be good. Just kidding on that part. Double O's on it. Maybe not. For some reason I heard this dude's name before and I just don't know where. Hopefully it wasn't like some kind of like drug charge out there. He only averaged 13 points a game last year at Kansas. I think that's the guy, one of the guys that won. I don't remember now. Oh, let me look at the rest of these. That's pretty good, though, to get a cracked ice and then a finals ticket in the same box. There's a Zion. Oscar Robinson. I'll have to look to see where these guys are projected to go. Nothing too crazy at it. Yeah, a lot of them do, I mean, but you never know. I mean, you think North Carolina, Duke, places like that would have top 10 every year, and it's not the fact. John Wall, Sparkles. Uh, Omar, Yurt7. Don't know if that's how you say it. Robert Woodard, the second. J.J. Culver, that's Jared Culver's younger brother. And I just remember, like I said, from the YouTube video he had out, like, crushed the game, like, some crazy amount of points. Lamar Stevens. Then a finals ticket, Udoko Azuboiki, as I'm calling him right now. And then a cracked ice, Xavier Sneed. Huh, I like these. Yes, this is all college. They haven't even done a draft yet, so there's no idea who these guys are going to play for. But yeah, a draft is always going to revolve around college uniform. Even as a star player. Like, I can't, that's why I take these off. So if you look like Booker on here, so if the Wildcats, Bill on the Gators, Durant back on his Longhorn days. I didn't know Lillard was uh, 
I was looking at this before, and I thought it was Weber, because I saw Weber up here. It just shows that I'm, like, not even really paying attention. Huh. I didn't really realize that. Syracuse. UCLA Bruins, Texas A&M Aggies, there's another UCLA, Spartans. Pretty cool stuff overall. I mean, I wouldn't go out and spend 325 a box on this, but for the one box I got it uh, pre-ordered, it's just well worth it. I, I'd feel bad selling it to somebody for that amount. This college stuff should be more than like a buck fifty two hundred box in my opinion, but that is just me. But, yeah, this is that team mall here. I'm going to open up Friday. This, I wasn't even going to come live, but I wanted to more test out the system and see how well it uh, goes after I spent all this time reconfiguring it. But team mall is supposed to edit is the red parallels. Be quite interesting on that. This is just going up on my slabs. I mean, hopefully whoever gets this pulls a big card out of it. But I, can't, I think these are selling between six and six fifty a box right now. That's just way too much money. Those used to come out and they were around like in the high two hundreds uh, last year. I think back the year before. Oh yeah, last year because that would have been uh, Luca's rookie year in any case. No, actually, the uh, Contenders draft used to be dirt cheap last year. Wait, not last year, year before. Before Zion, Luca's year, I want to say they were, after release, you're picking up between 160 180 a box. Ronaldo, I'll keep an eye out. I'll, I'll be live Friday with it. Oh, uh, yeah, I just know a blowout had them at the other day because we were laughing about that they were uh, freaking uh, 325 bucks. And see, what what's wrong out there with the market, and we've talked about this, but not on a YouTube platform, all right? So if you look and you're buying, like, boxes from David Adams, uh, um, Blowout, Leighton, and all them, they try to set the market extremely high because of the market in fluctuation right now. So say you bought a box. I, the, this stuff here was three twenty five dollars a box. So as a breaker, if I'm going to have to break a case of this, now I'm looking at over $3,600 a case. I think there's 12 boxes in the case. Or even if you go encased, I think they had it like six fifty seven hundred dollars a box. This is eight boxes in a case. You're looking at five thousand dollars, where it's unrealistically to break this stuff. And guys are basing their breaks based off of those prices. When there's other places out there that you could buy your wax from, that's a lot cheaper than blowout and all that. But people still are, you know, basing it off that. You got Dealer Net. Um, all you gotta do is have an EIN to get on to Dealer Net. And you could purchase cases all day long. A lot cheaper. Uh trying to think where else. A lot of the Raz rooms run a lot cheaper than blowout prices. Hundreds less. But yeah, I see a lot of it, though, where to where you're buying product at a premium that's way over premium. And then in order to basically try to make ends onto that product, it, it, it's hard. It's really hard as a breaker to where if you're buying it from a place, say, like Peach, Southern, or GTS, at least you know that money you're spending on that premium may help you down the road later for allocation wise to help offset prices later they all are abc every last one of them every last one of them 
I'll put I'll put you this way. I've now been offered by two local card shops in this around this area within an hour and a half drive to purchase my account. So basically, they would give me X amount of dollars, which is illegal, very illegal to do. I'm going to say this again. It's illegal to do this. You cannot purchase my account from GTS just so you could get product. It's illegal to do that. But they, they offered it. They're like, hey, then all you have to do is place our orders. We'll put your name on a, a company credit card. You just place our orders since you get an allocation. I'm like, no. It's illegal to do that. Very illegal. Yep, you got to on that. That's why, like, I pity a lot of people just started breaking because a lot of us have been doing it since, like, I know guys been breaking since 2008 before people even knew about breaking and stuff. But, like, 15 was, like, when everybody was kind of, like, converted to Breakers TV. And there's not many people left from that era. Yeah, look, Bates is gone. I don't know if that guy in here knows who Bates is, but Nasty Breaks, he's gone. He don't break no more. I think the only people I still know from back then, GV Sports Cards, Platinum, G1 Cards. Yeah, ain't happening. <laughs> I'll put you this way. I, I, was thought, I thought the guy was joking with me. He was dead serious. I'm like, dude, you can't do that. It's illegal. Illegal. Um, he wanted to buy my business out just so he could have the... Uh, he said, I just want to buy your business so that I can get your allocations. You can keep all your cards. He was basically trying to word he wanted to buy my name out. And I'm like, not happening, dude. Not happening. There's so much you would have to go down with that. I'm not even talking. No, not even getting involved in that craziness. But the, the, a lot of the shops can't get product, okay? And that's the issue is they were used to, back in the day, be able to get as much product as they want. Now they can't, unless you're, like, the big uh, distributor slash retailers of, like, Dave and Adams, Blowout, Still City, Layton, all that. Yeah, it's hard when you guys sit there and pay premium on everything and then... You got to figure in shipping fees, and then you got to figure how much is fair to make onto it, and then all the money you're dumping into that, it's not helping you down the road at all. Really not. I wish uh, David was in here because he uh, he got hooked into a good distributor uh, through. I think I got hit. He took through Peach, and he's been able to start to get some allocation now. Maybe with GTS, but uh, not with uh, Peach. So, there's D uh, David Neighbors that used to come in here all the time. I got him hooked up, gave him the uh, numbers to call, and he put in applications. I think GTS said he had to be breaking for six months or a year before they'll look at his account. And then uh, I think Peach was the one that took him. He's been doing fine with them. But it's getting allocations, everything. GTS is hard to get into because there's just so many of them out there, uh, people with licenses anymore, that you aren't going to get the product you used to. Here's an example. I used to get five cases of... Uh... What's up, Cardinals fan? I used to get five cases of... Uh... Bowman's best, okay? I'm down to one case. That's how many people are out there. And even, you got to think, though, I'm not losing it because of my volume. There's other people meeting my level. I don't know. It's hard. It's really hard. I would start off, if you can't get in GTS, I'd go to Peach. Um, their prices are reasonable at Peach. Even if you buy them after cost, it might be 10 20 bucks cheaper a box than Dave and Adams and all the other places. But by you spending with them, you start building an account with them. And 
I think that makes somewhat sense. What the heck do I have on my elbow here? I must have bumped the crap out of myself last night. Man. So that was when I was trying to get underneath the desk to pull wires and stuff. Yeah, I think neighbors got right into it. No questions asked on to it. Oh, I don't, I don't even, I'll be honest, I don't even spend 10000 a month. I'm probably, on a slow month, five to eight. Oh, okay, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, back in the day, everybody wanted you for accounts. I went on Breakers TV, and within uh, two weeks, I mean, I had everybody wanting to sell me accounts. Realistically, I just took GTS at first, and then I got offered a thing with Southern, and the guy sent me a contract I already filled out with somebody's name on it, and all their stuff. I'm talking about credit card, social. It's not popping up for me. Huh. Someone signed for over level. Whoever signed up, thank you, because I, I it didn't pop up on my screen. That's weird. I must not get the notifications till late. Oh, I saw him come on here and say hello. Yeah, that's kind of weird. It doesn't even show me that. Thanks, Cardinals fan. Get you into the giveaways this month. That's kind of weird. Oh, there it is. It just popped up now. Now I got a little green banner with his name on top of the live chat. Huh, must take a few seconds for me to see. You guys must get it quicker. Everybody else has done it when I'm offline, so I've never seen it ever pop up before. Yeah, it must have been a real delay for me seeing that. I have to look into that now. Pokemon's hard to break if you're doing it for people. I don't even know where to say it. I just opened up myself for personals. Yeah, Pokemon is a different animal. I know enough just to be a little bit dangerous. Element type. Oh yeah, you're way advanced to me. I would just test sell it by card. Open the pack up, top card gets the first spot. Or just write them all down and randomize them off to people. Way too much for me knowing elements and everything else. I'm lucky if I can pronounce half their names, to be honest. I know next week is uh, Garbage Pal Kids' 35th anniversary. Well, you really can't CVC in a pack draft because when you buy Pokemon, you're going to only gonna get like booster pack or two in there. And the best way to do it would probably be a hit draft, or not a hit draft, just a random card at the end. Uh, you're late, ABC. Pokemon's been hot for six months now. <laughs> six months plus. Those dudes have been rising those cards for a while, and I just kept kept watching them go up, 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 up in value. 
a matter of fact, six months ago, um, what is his name? I just lost it. He used to come in the rooms. Big Pokemon guy. I can't even think of his name now. He came in here and I had the original first boxes and we were talking about them. And I was watching them go up in value. Void, that's it. Yep, Void Start. Yep. Yeah, they've been up for a while. Yeah. Well, you can find them in the stores, but here's the trick. A lot of stuff you find in Walmart and Target's no good. You have to stick to ETBs, booster packs, and blister pack, I believe is the other name. Those are the only three that actually pay off. All that other stuff, those guys told me are garbage. Don't get them. Well, see, you got to look at the Elite Trainer boxes. Now, I will say my rep at GTS did square me away with this. So your ETBs, they're not all good. There's certain, like, Pokemon, Sword, and something, and there's all kinds of different series. Well, each one, you might not even have a Charizard in that series for that ETB. And that's why it's still sitting on the shelf. So I, I don't know what it is, but... Uh, Tell you there's a lot of research behind it and i'm just learning i'm lucky to have a couple people that are good on to it um because they told me that what did i just open up last week the it was like two z guys one's red one's blue um sword and shield zarconian or something like that Zarca zarcania they told me those boxes really weren't even worth it because there's nothing that hot into them unless you pull a v or a v max yeah i, I like I said, I'm just starting to venture into it. Oh, yeah, Champion's Path is real hot right now. I could still get them about 70 a box, but maybe 75. Okay, now I think I just got something popping up. That Magnus? I can't see. I can just see the fake so picture. Whoever it is, thank you, thank you. It... it let me see or show you guys what I just saw when it popped up. Hold on. So this is the other camera. I cannot read who that is at all. But that just popped up. Unless that's Cardinal Smith. I think it says Magnus on there. Oh, Yankees 42? Oh, my bad. Yankees 42. Oh, I appreciate it, sir. Kindly. Yeah, I was looking, I was like, it just popped up, too, on there. I don't know why Cardinals, you guys saw Cardinals fan before me. <laughs> I'm so used to your other name. I'll get it down right. There ain't too many people on right now. I just gotta get my camera fixed now. It's like leaning. Yeah. Uh, see, that's what I get for messing around with this stand. All right, we're just going to leave it like that. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't even read who it was on there. That just shows you, like, when it pops up, I can't read those. Who the name is. That's really weird. Cardinals fan took a while until I saw it pop in. Yeah, I'm going to come on here. Oh. Today's Wednesday, right? Yeah. Tomorrow, I'm going to do the announcement for the October piece of it all for the uh, members. As long as everything comes in tomorrow. Yeah, I, I was thinking about doing that that way. But the studio, like, so, 
without me moving the camera again, to my left side of this desk is my laptop, and I have another screen with XSplit on it. And so I'm not able to see, like, the bandwidth and all that stuff on there. But with Studio, I can see it. So if it's, like, wants to drop frame or something real quick, I'm able to see it quicker. But, yeah, I, I've noticed that, too. All right, ABC. Take care. Good luck on that Pokemon tonight, because, man, I butchered it completely both times. I had people email me about it. <laughs> oh, did I butcher that Pokemon? What day is November 17th? Hold on here. Oh, that's before Thanksgiving. All right. Way before. I think ABC goes on, uh, what is it, 8 p.m.? Eight thirty. Eight thirty. 8.30. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm telling you what, I'm glad. I don't think I did them live, the Pokemon. I think I just did them as videos. <laughs> and once you start opening, it's not like you just cut the video. It was horrible. Horrible. I thought I had so much knowledge, and I'm like, done. Yeah, my new thing I think I'm going to start trying to venture more into is the uh, the non-sports side of the house. But I'm not, I don't want to leave it like that broad of a category. Because when you hit non-sports, it's like a whole different world. I, I'm not going to touch Magic the Gathering and Yu-Gi-Oh! I think that's how you say it, Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, Pokemon, I'm going to start looking at like... Uh, Whenever they start doing, like, how Garbage Pal Kids was a 35th anniversary and stuff. Uh, little things like that here or there. But just for the fact that it's not crazily priced. Oh, man, hockey? I used to be a huge hockey nut. No, I will not do any kind of Leaf product. Nothing against Brian Gray and his in his business, but I cannot stand Leaf Metal, Leaf anything. The only thing I would even consider doing again is if he had Immortal Soccer. That was cool, and Leaf Pearl. That's about it. Hockey is outstanding. It's still relatively decent in price. It's the issue you're going to come into play is that the people that are going to buy into those brakes ABC are all from Canada, and its shipping is very expensive, usually about $10 to $11 to ship to Canada. And if you do a heavy product, you're talking $20 plus. I mean, I used to, I think it was, uh, well, I was real big with Crosby and Malkin the whole way through maybe 2016, 17, and I just stopped with hockey. It was just way too much on me. I like the cup. The cup was a great product. Um, SP Authentic, another great one. Then you got Upper Deck with the Young Guns. You have to look. There's SPX. There was, oh, wow. I can't even remember all the products. Upper Deck Black. I, I just was a big fan of Upper Deck from back in the day. Upper Deck had superior cards. They were, of course, licensed and everything. And if you really go back into it, Upper Deck started with the Sweet Spot Baseball. Carver Davis pretty good. He's pretty good. Right now, I would say McDavid is the face of hockey and Sidney Crosby and Ovechkin have backed down. Yeah, that that is the hard part with hockey. 
you're going to have people everywhere. When I did hockey, I was doing it as eBay breaks. And the only reason being is that I have to use the global shipping method. So that means I ship to an eBay hub, which mine was in Lexington, not too far from here. And they had to pay for shipping there, and then they had to pay whatever their global rate for however they did it from there on out. So I was only held responsible to get to Lexington. eBay covered me fr from there on out. So if that package got lost, damaged, or whatever, eBay ate it from there. And that's the only reason why I was doing it that way. Now, there's still some guys in the Monster Den that are from Canada and stuff, and I shipped to them. And I have no issue with it. Um, but we've been talking about it. Uh, thinking that, you know, if you're going to do international shipping, uh, try to announce this like once or twice a month on these days. Unless they want to pay out more to get shipped out. But that, that is a hard part there with international shipping. Oh, yeah, but see, the thing is, like, if you direct ship to them in Finland. I, I I don't use Pirate Ship. I just use straight PayPal. Same price as everything. I'm held responsible to get it the whole way to them. With eBay, if you use global shipping with through eBay program, you're only re held responsible to get it to eBay. eBay then takes all the all the I guess you could say protective measures to get it to that person. Because there were times where I was shipping Australian stuff, and it was taking like three weeks, and guys were starting to get sketchy. It normally only takes two weeks, and I was shipping first class to them, too. Which is why, you know, anything over a certain amount of weight. I think uh, first class for was up to 13 ounces back then. I don't know what it is now. But, yeah, the global shipping method, especially when you're starting to talk like big cards were going out. Mm-mm. <laughs> I was I was worried, but that global shipping method is like your little safe hub. That's just eat through eBay if you do breaks. If I did hockey, yes, I'd do it again. Well, I'm moving away from eBay completely this year. There will be no more me on eBay selling. Uh, as soon as Jeremy um. Gets the website back up for BST car, sport cards. I'm going on there, and I believe he's going to allow us to break off of it selling team. Uh, he's still waiting for somebody to fix glitches. He did a podcast about it the other, either yesterday or the day before, and we're still waiting for the early access. And I think he's trying to get it pushed out today to us, and then Sunday's the launch. I have no problem doing it that way through there because there's no fees except for my membership. I mean, eBay breaks do, do get you noticed. They will get you noticed very quickly. But as you can see, out of 20, what I got, like 2,200 subscribers, other people still come on after the eBay breaks. That, that was all from uh, mostly eBay breaks. And the other good thing with eBay breaks is, like, guys will take seven, eight teams. So, like, when you're shipping, you're, you're like, so thankful somebody took seven or eight teams as just one packet. You know? <laughs> now, that was one of the great things about that. But, yeah, they had me down to where I was paying 8.9% because of my rating and all that, and it wasn't bad. Yeah, I mean, it, it takes a while on that stuff. Yeah, it really can. And the thing is, there's people bouncing between other streams, too. The one thing that was good about eBay, I set a time and a date. So, say my eBay auction's edit tonight. I would come live tomorrow at, like, 6 p.m. And everybody knew that I would be on at 6 p.m. with a break. A unsold teams would be held up for uh you know for anybody wanting to buy type deal and that was it. There's still a lot of people come on here from eBay that watch and they don't even comment on here anymore. Um Vinny every so often will comment. 
He still breaks on me on occasion through the Monster Den. I'm trying to think who else I had from uh, eBay back in the day. There are quite a few. Vinny, Vinny's probably the biggest one from back in the day that I can remember because he was always in the breaks. I'm sure if I scroll through, I'll be like, oh, I forgot about these guys, too. So if I didn't mention it, be, I'm nothing personal. A lot of you guys came from Breakers, too. And it'll just be weird, like, just the time of the day you come on, you got to look at it. Your biggest thing, if you want to fill breaks, Breakers uh, TV. But you have to do it when there's not a lot of breakers on. And it'll help get you exposed. Even if you just have your webcam going, say it not live, buy my breaks in the store to get you noticed. No, it's 20, uh, Yankees. 20. Now, it depends on what you're doing, too. If you're doing a value one or quarterly special, they might have dropped the limit down on those, but it's been 20 for... The, what do you call that thing? The, I guess you call it the value break, yeah. It's a website, breakers.tv. <laughs> I'm so used to calling you Magnus. <laughs> Yankees 42. It'll stick with me in a little bit. Yeah, Breakers.tv. It's free to make an account on there. You don't have to buy anything. I did. I had a little membership. I think it was like 10 bucks a month just so I have to watch crazy pop-up ads. Yeah, it should be 15 bucks a card at 20. Yeah, 300. Well, I think it'll come out to 335 because you got to add the shipping back to you and the shipping there with insurance. I think it ran me like 335. Just remember, though, the cards can't grade over a $199 value, because otherwise they bump you up levels and charge you more. Hey, Thorn Machine. That's yeah, not bad. Now, when you do that, though, make sure... So you're at... Oh, man, I don't have anything out here that big. I'm going to use a standard card here. So this is a regular standard card. You're going to print off a uh, barcode that has to go on the outside of your box now. So it's probably half the length of this by like maybe half an inch tall. And what I did is I printed them off by three extra ones. and or Yeah, three. So I had a total of four, and I put them on all sides of the box. So that way when they scan or one would fall off, I'm not like put into the other pile as they call it when you go in there. Because then you're looking at an additional four to eight weeks till they get to those. Oop, let me move my mouse. There we go. Oh, okay, yeah, you should be good then. I was in a Mariano the other day. I was hoping I'd hit the thing. It was a uh, transcendent. I believe it was numbered out of 10. Yeah, I mean... But that's why I store my package when it goes out. Transcendent, Tops Transcendent, that expensive, like $27,000 box. The one that has the uh, gold border around of all the cards and then has the, usually like a ticket to go meet some player at some event. Well, to me, if you don't write on the outside of your box economy level or whatever, they're going to put you into another stack too. Trust me, it happened to me because I forgot to do it, but my rep went in there and found it real quick for me. Because I, I knew what day it came in. Yeah, I tried to hit it. No no avail. No avail. I, I, I chalked up the old loss column on that one. 
Yeah, I sure hit the last calm line. Every now and then a Mariano will appear in there, and I just, I saw it appear, and I was like, let me give a shot at this, see what happens. Because I know you like him, and I've been like, yeah, I was in for X amount of dollars if you want the card. I don't see much Jeters. I was in another Jeter one the other day, and I had no bueno on it either. I had three spots in it, too. Three out of ten. No bueno. You know, that's what I meant to grab, too, when I went up to my uh, safety deposit box. So, speaking of back in days in hockey, Upper Deck Black had uh, redemptions for Matt Murray. He was the goaltender for the Penguins, uh, rookie auto out of 99. I had four of them, right? Sat on them for over two years. They dropped in value. I kept getting told they're getting made. So finally, I get the right rep on the phone, have a long chat, and they're like, well, give me some players you like. So I named it off, and he's like, I'll tell you what, I got something for you. And he goes, you'll like it. He sent me, you know how they have the name plates with like the J, the E, and all that out of the jersey? He sent me the whole uh, Jeter one. All five autoed, and I think they were out of, it was something like out of 27 or 28. And then I end up changing in another hockey card, and I don't recall who it was. It was another rookie from the same year time frame. He sent me a Jeter and Roger Clemens on card dual auto from, I think it was SP Authentic or something like that there. SP something was on it. And I end up selling that to a big Jeter collector because those things aren't circulated. The redemptions expired on them and everything. Yeah, next time I go up, we're off to grab them because I got all of, of the whole letter set. It's like the one cool thing in Jeter that I got. And nowadays, if you were to pull those Jeter letters, they'd be one of one. Back in the day when Upper Deck did them, they made so many sets of them. Ronaldo is a is a hard one. When I opened up that Leaf Immortals. I'll tell you, the only person I remembered was uh, the Pele dual auto was some other guy. It was an old-timer. Gordon, I think, was his name. And everybody was like, that's a big card right there. I think it was numbered out of like 5 or 10 auto. But the other autos, there was another name that was on there. And I was just looking at it, and I'm like, this is kind of... I'd never heard of the guy before. I'd have to go back and look at the video of it. Oh, that's a nice piece there, 64 Clemente. Definitely nice. Yeah, my Clementes are on the dry hold. I got every Clemente now from rookie to 73 tops. And the only thing that I would even probably add to that collection, because most of my stuff, minus the rookie in second year, are graded at an 8 or higher, would be if I would upgrade... Or if I would uh, pick up a cut auto, which we know I'm not ever going to do. Yep, they're expensive, man, them 8s and 9s. Especially when you start looking at some of the pop levels. It, it's immense. And the funny part was I won the 73 tops PSA 9 and a 73 I won. It was either a 66 or 67 8 that I won in a room a long time ago too. I mean the only one I was missing was the rookie card. I didn't want to buy one raw. And I hooked up a guy with this huge, huge deal. Because there was no way I was affording this thing. 
And I, I tried to ask the guy if he would just sell me one Clemente rookie. It didn't matter what condition it was in. They were all in nice condition. Well, anyhow, long story short, the guy bought the whole warehouse out up there. It was like his dad's collection. And we're talking like old gloves from like 1920s and 30s and stuff. It was in, the most insane vintage collection I've ever seen. And uh, I told him I just wanted one Clemente rookie out of it all if I could buy it from him. And he said, yeah, yeah, I'll get it for you. Well, he ended up going and getting it graded all of them, and he sent me a nice one. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> this here, though, none of this stuff was fake. This guy was featured in magazines, local magazines out here from his collections and stuff. He had a lot of, like, Kentucky Derby pieces, too, in there. Uh, I remember dip bats, the bats weren't autographed, but they were from different time frames of games and stuff. Um, the gloves, I remember the biggest part of it all. He had some wax, but it wasn't anything like, you know, you drool over type deal. It wasn't like a box of, like, 1970 tops or something. Um... But I, I just happened to see, because was, the guy was showing me a lot of the pictures from in there, and I saw the Clementes, and I just wanted them all. There was no way. But yeah, that was the last piece of the puzzle, was that Clemente rookie. And I didn't want to buy like a 3, 4, or even possible 5. I, I was trying to shoot for a 6 or over, and you could just imagine the price on that. But yeah, the last thing would be would be like a Clemente cut autograph card, and right now, way way too much for me to do. I, I was actually tempted to sell a Luke at one time frame. I still have to save to buy uh, a Clemente cut. All right, take care. Have a good dinner. I'll be on Friday. We'll open up that T Mall soccer. All right, everybody, appreciate you stopping by tonight. I didn't realize I was pushing an hour. I am waiting on a phone call, which I highly doubt is going to happen within the next 20 minutes anyhow. Just make sure he hasn't called. I don't think he has, no. But um, I'll be live Friday night. We'll do the uh, T-Mall soccer. I'm going to push a video out. Probably I'll have to see what day I'm going to do it for uh, the members and stuff like that. But it's a pretty cool looking package and everything, and it's going to go out. Other than that, everybody, take care. I will catch you all Friday for sure.